Welcome to Scanner School. This is session 140, and we're talking about virtual scanners. Now, again, all the sessions shown us can be found on our website at scannerschool.com slash session 140. So, yes, today we're talking about the virtual or secret scanner that lives inside of many GRE, Whistler, and Radio Shack scanners. It's called the V-Scanner or the virtual scanner. So today we're talking about how to turn your scanner into tens to hundreds of different scanner radios. Before we start this week's podcast, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a month-to-month sponsorship platform. We have three different support tiers, each with different benefits. But the most valuable tier is our $5 a month tier. This equates to sponsoring the podcast for about a dollar per episode. Now, not only do our $5 Patreon supporters receive the podcast early, but they also receive a commercial-free version of the podcast delivered directly to their podcast player. Some may say that the included squelchy sticker pack that is mailed to your home is the best benefit of the $5 level, but I think it's the community or the club that is growing at this level. You see, we meet once a month on Zoom, and we have a roundtable discussion about scanning, ask questions, offer advice. Some of the members are answering other people's questions, and we just talk with our fellow scanner school classmates. This is an exclusive group for our $5 Patreon members. Now, again, if all this wasn't enough at that level, you'll also receive discounts to upcoming Scanner School courses and offerings. Now, you can help support Scanner School by going to www.scannerschool.com slash Patreon or www.scannerschool.com slash support. Now, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters at all levels, and they are Craig Harper, Dan, Ed Walsh, Eddie Kay, Edward Dufour, Glenn Bryden, Guy Lee, James Felling, Jeff Block, Jenny Taylor, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Mark Thompson, Mark Beebe, Michael Kroger, Paul Teal, Raymond Hill, Richard Armstrong, Ronnie Bach, Sal Marandola, Scott Vorder, Signals Everywhere, Tim Mazza, Ted Glendie, and Willie Marcan. Now let's start the podcast. Welcome to The Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. If this is your first week joining us for class, or if you're a weekly listener, welcome to this week's podcast. So today we are continuing our focus on Whistler, GRE, and Radio Shack scanners. Now, a few weeks ago, we discussed object-oriented scanning and how to configure those radios and work with that programming. So today we build on that topic because what we are talking about today is only available on most, but not all, Whistler, GRE, and Reishek models that support object-oriented scanning. Now, if you've missed the podcast that talks about object-oriented scanning, you can catch that at scannerschool.com slash session 136. So the list of scanners that support these scanners are the GRE PSR 500, 600, 700, and 800, the Radio Shack Pro 106, 197, 651, 652, and 668, and the Whistler 1040, 1065, 1080, 1088, 1095, and the TRX-1 and the TRX-2. Now, the Pro 18 the Pro 107, the PSR 310, the PSR 410, these are object-oriented scanners that do not have the V-Scanner built in. So what exactly is a V-Scanner, and how is it useful? Well, a V-Scanner is basically a virtual scanner that's built into your existing scanner. And depending on your scanner model, you can have from 21 to 200 virtual scanners in your radio. So what exactly is a virtual scanner? A virtual scanner saves an entire list of objects and your scanner config, all your scan lists in a virtual scanner or a set of configurations that's inside your scanner. So what exactly makes this so awesome? Well, you can set up your scanner multiple ways and load it up as you need them. So if you want to make a backup of your scanner just in case you mess something up and you want to restore it in the future, well, that's a vScanner for you. Go ahead and reload in your vScanner, and boom, you're up and running with a backup copy of your scanner. You want to do a bit of traveling? Great. Set up a vScanner for your destination. When you get there, swap your virtual scanner folder, 
and you'll be scanning what they set up for your vacation location. That kind of rhymes. <laughs> but when you get home, just load in your home virtual scanner and your scanner will be configured as if it never left your house. So before we discuss any further how to launch and save vScanners and what the differences are between the original vScanner and the newer vScanner 2, let's talk about a better real-life example on how you could use a vScanner. So as you know, I live here on Long Island. If you couldn't tell from my accent, yes, that's where I'm from. What many people don't realize, though, is that Brooklyn and Queens, the two boroughs of New York City, are also a part of Long Island. And for those of us who live here on Long Island, by the way, we say on Long Island, not live in Long Island, because you can't live in an island, you live on an island. We think of just the two counties that we say Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk County. So let's just say I set up a Long Island bank. And banks 1 through 10 on my Whistler scanner is set up for Nassau County scanning. I then take banks 11 through 20, and I set those up for Suffolk County scanning. And I don't know, I, I'm just, I'm very hyper-organized when it comes to scanning my memories in, in my banks, in my scanners. I think some of you guys all know that by now. So let's just say I have my 10 banks set up in all my scanners, such as bank 1. We'll start with bank 1 and go bank 10, hypothetically speaking here. A hot list, the police, the fire, EMS, OEM, hospitals, sheriff's department, county services, utilities, and then the 10th bank will be reserved for miscellaneous. So I know that if I'm in the Nassau County side of the scanner, right, banks 1 through 10, it's going to be laid out that way. Suffolk County side, 20, uh, 11 through 20, would also be set up the exact same way. It saves me from having to memorize 20 different banks. I only have to memorize 10 banks. So example, again, second in order was the police. So in bank 2 and also in bank 12 would be police. Bank 5 and 15 would be OEM, right? One bank, Nassau, then the 10s bank would be for Suffolk. But say I also want to do the same thing for New York City, but I'm just out of room now on how to put New York City stuff in. Well, what I can do is set up a virtual scanner now for New York City. And I can set up banks 1 through 10 in my virtual scanner the same way. But what if I want to break out now boroughs in bank 21 through 20? Well, again, easy with a virtual scan at the same configuration. I could set up the five boroughs and maybe do 1 through 15 as NYPD and 16 through 20 as FDNY. Now I've got a virtual scanner set up for Long Island, for Nassau and Suffolk County. And then I can quickly toggle into the virtual scanner for New York City, where I've got my same layout for banks 1 through 10 and a hybrid in 21, or I'm sorry, 11 through 20. Well, maybe I want to set up my scanner so it just does fire on the island. So I could set up a virtual scanner just for that. I could do bank one for Nassau, bank two for Suffolk, let's say bank three for FDNY citywide, then another one for Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens. Yeah, we'll include Staten Island. And also we'll set one up for EMS for countywide one, and I mean, sorry, citywide one and citywide two. And then in the 10th position, we could put the DARS network, which is the fire ground repeated or uh, talk group channels on the do it uhf system and on the fly now i can modify the contents of my scanner change all of my scan lists and make it as if i have different scanners in the palm of my hand just by toggling v scanners so on a side note we're going to break apart now v scanner one versus v scanner two but again this is how it works and i really think that this is one of those underrated features that are built into the Whistler product line. Personally, I wish I spent more time personally working inside of virtual scanners. I never personally found the need to do that because I've always set up my scanners using Butel software. But again, using Butel software or using the easy scan software that comes with certain Whistler models, this is one of those practices I hope to do more often as I program in one of my scanners. On the other side of this break, let's talk more about these scanners and some of the odds and tweaks that you can make when it comes to programming. We'll be right back. Did you know there are ways to help support the Scanner School podcast that doesn't take any time or any extra money on your part? If you go to scannerschool.com support, you will find we have several ways 
that you can continue to do your online shopping and help support us. We have links to Amazon. If you click on our link before you go to Amazon, anything you buy from there will help support Scanner School. Now, if you're in a market for a brand new scanner, an antenna, other accessories, we have links to Scanner Master, where you can not only purchase a scanner and accessories, but you can also get your radio programmed. And by clicking on our link before you buy, you are helping to support the podcast. Now, if you're in a market for software, we have links to Butel. And if you want something new to you, we also have links to eBay. Again, just go to scannerschool.com slash support before you make your purchases, and you are helping to support Scanner School at no additional cost to you. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealer serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every Scanner Radio user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now, with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the box, it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger. The G2s to G5s, they do P25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice, paging on conventional NP25. Oh, and they're upgradable too to DMR type one and type two. They are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners. And with a pager like a Swiss phone S quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works? Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, Plus, maybe set up a Pioware or even just make some changes and you don't understand how the system and the equipment works? The podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one-hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely, and I can guide you through step-by-step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com. Dot com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. All right, so we have a scanner now with virtual scanners. I've got you now foaming at the mouth, right? I've got you, I've got you going crazy for these virtual scanners. Let's let's talk about how we can load one in and, and toggle it and even use it and the differences between a virtual scanner and a virtual scanner too. So. Radios like the Pro 651, 652, the 106, the 197, the Whistler 1040 and 1065, and as well as the PSR 500, 600. I am pretty sure that these scanners here all support the original V-Scanner method. From my research online, I've basically been using Mark's scanners for this research. Great website, by the way, and I'm going to give him a quote in a little bit, too, on, on, on something. But these scanners all use the original vScanner method, right? vScanner 1 or just vScanner. So what's the difference here? These radios, you must enter the vScanner menu to save your settings in the profile you are in. So if you have a vScanner loaded and you're making changes, maybe you lock things out or you add things to the configuration of the scanner, 
you're going to have to go back into your vScanner menu and click on save. This will then take your existing configuration and save it to the vScanner. If this is a nuisance, let me tell you about something that works really well on these scanners, and that's the ability to create virtual scanners from within the scanner. By pressing Function Program and entering the vScanner menu, you can easily load, store, and erase the vScanners from within the scanner. It's simple, it's menu-driven, and it works very well. Now again, virtual scanners, when you go ahead in there and you modify things and you change and you erase the configuration of the scanner, it operates in the vScanner you're currently working in. It's a tip for you. It doesn't erase everything. It erases or configures your vScanner. So let's take a look at the current two flagship models that Whistler has, the TRX-1 and the TRX-2. You would think something like this would make it about a lot easier to work with your virtual scanners, especially since this has the vScanner 2 in it. Now, a vScanner 2 will save your changes on the fly. So instead of like the original vScanner, you have to go into the vScanner menu and click on save for that virtual scanner. As you make changes in the scanner's configuration, when you load in a vScanner, the scanner will save it to that vScanner automatically. There's no worries about that. But if you want to create a vScanner from within the radio, the task is so much more easier to do it within the EasyScan software. So again, once you've created your virtual scanners in the EasyScan software, you can then load your virtual scanners in your radio by entering the virtual scanner menu. Super easy. Just click on menu, scroll down to virtual scanner, then scroll to the right and pick your virtual scanner that you'd like to listen to. So if you look at MarksScanners.com and you kind of go into the TRX-1, TRX-2, easy to uh, understand programming guide, he gives a little bit of a hint on how you can do this from the scanner itself. I mean, to me, it just seems like it would be a lot easier to do this from the EasyScan software, but he's saying there's some sort of way that you can set the location to import objects. And he says, use a backup data to save the first empty vScan folder and then select a new vScan folder to use clear channels. This you know, this will leave you with another empty folder to use. So I think he found a way to work around it, but I have never tried it. I think the you know the the virtual scanners uh, or the easy scan software is probably the, the quickest and easiest way to do it, and you probably wouldn't mess anything up. I mean, it seems like why would they take the virtual scanner software or virtual scanner settings in a scanner and then allow you to store right from the scanner and then in these virtual scanner two or vScanner twos, they take that option away from you. It just makes me want to hit my thumb with a, with a hammer, I think, when I think about it. So going back to the topic here. So again, you could try that. But anyway, so the nice thing too about the V scanners is that you can name them with an alias. So when you go through your V scanner list, now again, some re- scanners only have 21 memory uh, V scanners and like the TRX-1 and 2, you can have 200. So again, you can name them. You can you can put an alias in the V scanner so you know what you'd have. So again, in my examples, I could do like Long Island, I could do New York City, uh, I could do uh, Island Wide Fire, or something like that, so that I I know what list I'm about to bring in. So again, when you save again, here's another hit. I'm gonna re- I'm gonna I'm gonna just try to iron this home. When you save the changes to your scanner, or do a factory reset or default. It's only going to make those changes to the V scanner you currently have loaded in the scanner. It will not factory reset the entire scanner. All right. Again, virtual scanner one require you to store or save the V scanner, and a virtual scanner twos and a newer radios will automatically do that on the fly. So there you have it. Really quick podcast today on what virtual scanners use. And again, this is probably one of the most underused, underestimated, and under-advertised features when it comes to a scanner radio, at least in my point of view. And you know what? After doing some more research on the V scanner, I think I'm going to go forward and use these more often. I mean, like I said, I haven't really used virtual scanners because I didn't feel the need for it because I have Butel software that's sitting right there and I can actually I can just change it on the fly if I had to, right? That's just the way I'm used to being using the Uniden product, making different profiles for different places you go and loading them up. Right? But the V scanner allows you to do that and save it to the scanner so you don't have to keep plugging the scanner into the computer to redo it. And going through this and realizing that and having the light bulb tar- turn on here for me, I am definitely gonna take this as an opportunity to play around with some V scanners some more 
and to start building profiles within that. And I really hope that this podcast has turned you on to that as well. And you will also use vScanners more often, or at least have a better understanding on how they work. So tell me, how did we do this week? Let me know by going to scannerschool.com slash session 140 and leave me your feedback so that I know what parts I might have left out or where I could help out more with. And again, remember to go to scannerschool.com slash Zello to join our weekly Scanner Radio Net. And if you're listening right now and you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, please take your phone out of your pocket and click that subscribe button on your podcast player of choice so you can get next week's podcast delivered straight to your email. If you don't use a podcast player, we have a newsletter sign up on the front page of our website. Put your email address in there. And every week we will send you a notification that the latest podcast is out. If you enjoy this podcast, please remember to like and share with your friends in your favorite scanner radio email distribution list or even in your favorite online forum, websites, and also your social media groups. I'm Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School. We teach you everything you know about the scanner radio hobby. We'll talk to you all again next week when we have another Ask Scanner School session up on deck. 73.